A Stuart Models number one steam engine, which arrived with me the other day for an inspection and diagnosis of the mechanical problems. And I must say that I'm impressed with the box. The box is really quite well made. It's taking some getting into it. In fact, I think the getting into the box part is going to take longer than it's going to take me to figure out what's wrong with it. So I've removed the front cover and now there's some bubble wrap. And I'm very carefully taking this out of the box. One or two things I've sold in the past have been damaged by the owner receiving the package in the post and being very excited and dragging out the bubble wrap and banging things onto the table. Then when he gets inside and finds the engine's broken, it's a case of, oh dear. And it's very easily done because bubble wrap hides the fragile parts that may be sticking out. So I just thought I'd mention that because it is quite important. And in the box also was a jiffy bag containing Stuart number one drawings. And here on my turntable, which is a thing called a lazy Susan with a piece of wood on the top of it, is the freshly unpacked Stuart Models number one steam engine. So that's enough talk about turntables and bubble wrap. What's wrong with this engine? Superficially, this engine looks very well made. Most of the parts that I can see seem to be well machined, which is always a good sign. But once again, it's spoilt by the sloppy way that it's been put together. If you look at these eccentric straps, they're very sloppy, and the right-hand bolt is not even tight. This is no major issue and can be put right very simply. A while back, a viewer got quite stroppy with me and told me off for criticising steam engines that I'm asked to work on. Well, unfortunately, I have to do this. It's completely pointless me saying, this is a beautiful engine, and it's a credit to the man who built it, and the man who assembled it. But wait a minute, it doesn't run. It won't even try and run. There are so many things wrong with it, I don't know where to start. I really don't. Now where did I put my new tablets? Relax everyone, I do know where to start. The first thing to do is to put some compressed air into it. I did that, and it sort of tried to run, but didn't really complete the cycle properly. So I'm not going to mess about. I'm going to go straight into the steam chest and have a look at the valve events. If you think about it, simply and logically, there are certain requirements to make a steam engine run. One of them, of course, is pressure of some kind, whether it's compressed air or steam. Another is a piston that moves up and down in a cylinder. Ugh, just a minute, what is this? I've taken the cover off and there's no gasket. There's this horrible stuff that looks like something from the film Alien. So once we've established that we need pressure to run a steam engine, the next thing we need is a piston which goes up and down in the cylinder, and this must not leak. And then we need a valve, and this steam engine has a slide valve, and here it is. And the function of this valve is to admit the steam to the cylinder at each end in turn, and exhaust it through a central exhaust port that you can't see because it's behind the valve. This valve doesn't look or feel right, so I'm going to take it out and have a closer look at it. To do that, I have to partially dismantle the valve gear. So I've disconnected the valve fork from the die block, which runs in the expansion link. And the expansion link is that curiously shaped thing in the middle. And you will of course notice that even though I've removed the valve fork from the die block, the valve fork still will not clear the expansion link. So in this clip, I'm removing one of the eccentric rods from the expansion link. And once I disconnect the expansion link from the eccentric rod, I can move the whole assembly out of the way. I'm really being careful not to drop any of these small nuts and bolts on the floor in my workshop, because at the moment, my workshop is an absolute disgrace. Yes, I freely admit it. It really needs cleaning up. So on Thursday, two very good friends of mine, along with myself, are going to spend the entire day cleaning out the workshop. And after this, I will be able to do a workshop tour. My workshop is a very humble affair. It's not a big posh workshop. With the valve gear safely out of the way, I can have a look at the valve rod. And the first thing I notice is that the valve fork is very loose on the end of the valve rod. I think I'll treat this to some Loctite when I reassemble it. Anyway, here are the ports inside the steam chest. And they're really not too bad. Don't worry about the roughness around the edge of the ports. These are cast in and you're going to get that. It's not an issue. And by far the most common problem I come across in model steam engines is the fact that the drive nut is too tight a to fit in the valve. And this really is a very common problem. What I did to rectify this with this engine 
Even though it's only an assessment, I couldn't carry on until I got this to work. I just touched it on my one-inch belt sander and made it physically smaller. Only an extremely tiny amount, but it's the tiny amount that counts. Once I had the valve out of the steam chest, I had a good look at it. Now normally when you machine a slide valve, you machine a square cutout in the centre. And this large square cutout is to exhaust the steam. But I think when this valve has been machined, there was some sort of an error because it has a brass plate soldered over the front of it, which has a square cutout in it, and it's pushing the valve backwards towards the steam chest cover. And once again, I know this is supposed to be just an assessment, but I cannot carry on until I can get this valve to work. So I'm using an end mill to make this slot a little deeper. Because what's actually happening, as the valve has moved backwards with this extra plate at the front, the valve rod is being pressed by the valve, and that in turn is causing the drive block to jam in the slot. And all this means is the valve is just not seating properly on the ports. So now, when I put it all back together, the valve should be floating nicely over these steam ports. And when I reconnect the valve rod, it's a lot freer than it was to start with. The steam or air pressure against the slide valve is what holds it on the port face, and you do not want any more mechanical pressures. Before replacing the steam chest cover, I'm just giving it a quick rub on this wet and dry sandpaper to get rid of all that stuff that was on the back of it. This engine really needs gaskets making all round. The owner of the engine asked me what the threads are in the exhaust outlet and the steam inlet. I had to guess I would think it's something like 3 8 by 26 threads per inch. It will of course be on the drawing, I'll have a look later. I think I'll have a quick look in the cylinder. And to do this, I'm removing the bolts from the cylinder cover. I'm not too thrilled about all this rubbish coming out with the bolts. I think it's that rubbery stuff again. Anyway, on with the job. Give it a bit of a clean up there. It's now time to get the cylinder cover off, and it's one hell of a job. I've tried all the normal methods with my small craft knife. In the end, I had to use a brand new Stanley knife blade. In order to persuade the cylinder cover to leave the cylinder, because it was firmly stuck to the cylinder with this rubbery stuff. The rest of this clip just shows me cleaning up the top of the cylinder cover. I even had to use the Stanley knife blade to scrape off some more of this rubber that was sticking all around the top. One of the easiest ways to see whether the cylinder and piston are a good seal is to just put some thin oil on top of the piston and wait a bit, go and have a cup of tea and after a while when you get back if there's no oil you do not have a good seal. But the good news is this seal is okay. And just for a change that's actually something good. Other Stuart No. 1 steam engines that I've worked on have had a cast iron piston ring, which is a very good thing. Anyway, for the moment, as this is just an assessment, the cylinder is OK, so I'm putting back on the cylinder cover. And now I'm connecting my airline. I've set the timing to where it's supposed to be, and is it going to run? Well, yes, of course it is. I do know a little bit about these things. I've worked on them for many, many years. And as I said earlier, it's a process of elimination. It's like a sequence of events. Is it the cylinder? No. Is it the piston? No. Is it the valve? Yes. Hmm. Fix the valve. Does it work? Sort of. Everything is still very sloppy, and the big end is slack, so I'm just tightening up that. It still doesn't sound very good, but at least it's not like a pneumatic drill anymore. Well, it is a bit, but not like a really proper loud, large pneumatic drill. I cannot get the valve events any better than this, because the linkages that control the valve gear are incredibly sloppy. They want repinning and remaking. But surprisingly, there's not too much up and down play in the big end and the small end. There's quite a lot of side play though, and that's just going to make an annoying rattling sound. What I do notice though is the flywheel is loose on the crankshaft and again this is a very common thing. The flywheel is not very tight on the crankshaft. I'll have a look at that in a moment. I'm just busy tightening up the nut on the other side of the big end. It's quite fiddly but I've done many worse jobs than this. And I do believe it's starting to sound more like a steam engine. Obviously the eccentric straps are too slack. 
One of the first things that I noticed about this engine, once it started running, after I fixed the slide valve and adjusted the timing correctly, was the amount of run out on the flywheel. This was fairly excessive. This could just be the fact that it's a bit of a rattle fit on the crankshaft. Another reason for this could be the fact that the key that is in the keyway in the crankshaft is not the right size. It needs a key making that is the same size as the keyway in the crankshaft and the flywheel. This part of the valve gear is a real problem. The reversing lever is loose on the shaft and also the drop arm, which is also connected to the same shaft, is very loose. So really, most of the movement is lost, and it just wobbles about. I shouldn't be able to do this at all. Consequently, the engine is not liking going in reverse. In my opinion, a flywheel on a model engine, or even a full-size engine, should not stick out too far from the end of the crankshaft, because that's how crankshafts get bent. So I tap this one back a little way, and you can see here just how slack this key is. It's supposed to be a tight fit in both the crankshaft keyway and the flywheel keyway. So it definitely needs a new key making. What I did though was I put the flywheel back to the end of the crankshaft because that's how I received it. This video is only an inspection and assessment. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.